two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is Inventory Visibility Add-in for Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management. My name is Brad, and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live Events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you're agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenter team will be responding to your questions throughout the event. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Hiran Naik, Senior Solution Architect. And behind the scenes, our presenter support team includes Harsh Birla, Senior R&D Solution Architect, and Zach Greenvoss, Principal R&D Solution Architect. Hiran, over to you. Thank you, Brad. Hello and welcome everyone uh, for the today's Tech Talk session, which is on inventory visibility add-in for Dynamics 365 supply chain management. As part of this Tech Talk, we are covering uh, followings. We will have an overview of inventory visibility add-in. We'll look into the architecture. We'll present you some of the use case scenario where inventory visibility can be extremely useful. Uh, how you can set up and configure inventory visibility, how you can view uh, inventory on hand, and how you can reserve the inventory. Uh, as part of the demo, I would like to cover some of the install setup and config aspects, as well as I will show you different way to view the inventory on hand, as well as the reservation. Uh, and then we'll close it with some of the best practices and some Q&A uh, if time permits. Alright, so let's start in the first section with an overview. So what is the inventory visibility service? Uh, inventory visibility service is basically a microservice. It's a scalable microservice to track near real time inventory on hand data. Uh, you can not only view the inventory on hand from D365 SCM, but you can also integrate inventory visibility through uh, to the external systems so that it can give you the global view of inventory on hand throughout your organization. Uh, with the 365 SCM, you can have uh, inbuilt integration with the inventory visibility. Uh, and as uh, and if you when you want to integrate with the external systems, it provide a restful APIs not to just view inventory on hand, but you can also add inventory on hand. Uh, you can update it and you can also reserve inventory on hand through the APIs for the external systems. You can view the inventory on hand across various variety of dimensions. It supports all the dimensions out of the box for the D365 SCM. So those base dimensions are already available in inventory visibility. Uh, and uh, you can basically aggregate some of those dimensions and you can get the aggregate result set as well. Uh, inventory visibility has a component with the Dataverse as well. So as part of the Dataverse and Power App, you can basically configure your uh, data sources, uh, which actually correspond to your external systems. And as part of these data sources, you can configure dimensions, uh, product index hierarchy, measures, as well as the calculated measures. And since it is built on top of Dataverse, you have an option to even sync the inventory on hand data from inventory visibility. To, uh, uh, to Dataverse and you can build Power BI, Power Automate and Power Apps on top of uh, Dataverse tables as well. Now let's look at the architecture, how it's been designed. So as you can see in the diagram in the middle part, we have the inventory visibility service itself. It consists of two components, the query instance as well as the cache instance. The cache instance is the one which kind of holds all of the inventory data. 
Uh, as you can see uh, on the left, we have a D365 SCM, which has a built in integration with inventory visibility. So once you configure the inventory visibility and uh, enables the integration between 365 SCM and inventory visibility, all of the inventory data automatically flows from D365 SCM into the inventory visibility. On the right hand side, you see the Dataverse component. The Dataverse component serves two purposes. It provides a, 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 a model driven power app through which you can configure the inventory visibility and those configurations are eventually pushed into the inventory visibility service. So anytime when when the request comes through for to view the inventory or to add the inventory, uh, those configurations will be used. The data would be retrieved from the in memory cache and it will be represented back uh, via the APIs or uh, to the external systems. So uh, uh, you can have a uh, scalable in memory cache. So as your inventory on hand data load increases, it will automatically scale and will give you the, uh, the optimum performance. And that's the main advantage of having an inventory visibility service outside of D365 uh, that you can not only have the view of inventory from D365, but you can also have a view from inventory for, for the other external systems. And it also takes away the, the load from the D365 SCM system itself, and you can query uh, and entertain as many requests as possible throughout the day uh, as part of your process flows. Uh, as part of the Dataverse, uh, it also built, it has the built-in in, in sync, as I mentioned. So you, you have an option to uh, sync the inventory on hand data from inventory visibility into the Dataverse and it will reside into the Dataverse table. And on top of that, you can have, you can build uh, Power BI insights or you can create uh, Canvas apps. Uh, Canvas apps, uh, you can also use, uh, you can also build uh, and it can directly read the uh, request the inventory on hand data from the inventory visibility itself. So you have multiple capabilities and extensibility scenario uh, to, to build your process flows. These are some of the use case scenario which we have put together, uh, which could help you understand in what scenarios inventory visibility can be implemented. Uh, but this is not a full list. This is just to give you an understanding uh, how inventory visibility uh, can be useful or to, to manage some of your requirements. So just to list few here, uh, if you have a requirement uh, to view the inventory on hand, the global inventory on hand in D365 field service before the field service engineer complete the uh, work order, then you can have you can have that integration built between uh, D365 field service and inventory visibility and you can have that that view. Similarly, if you are taking orders through D365 CE applications, you can build that integrations with inventory visibility and you can not only see the inventory from SCM, but uh, the whole global view across multiple dimensions. You can also build uh, if you have an e-commerce solution or a website uh, where you would like to uh, embed uh, 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 integration with inventory visibility, you can do that so that customer can ensure that the product is in stock uh, before they place an order. Uh, you you can also fulfill some of the reservation scenario if you have a uh, event coming up and if you are trying to launch a product and if you want to make sure that you have enough inventory, you want to make sure that uh, certain warehouses and locations have enough inventory in place so you can reserve those inventory as, as part of the inventory visibility and uh, make sure that uh, uh, your order fulfillment is, uh, uh, is optimum. You can also uh, have a bot framework integrated with inventory visibility and you can have this uh, virtual assistant embedded in your websites or a portal uh, through which uh, either personas in the organization or uh, it can be public facing where customer can request on hand information for a specific product uh, via specifying certain product or, or, or certain uh, dimensions parameters. It can also enable some of the intelligent order management fulfillment scenario. Uh, IOM can be integrated with the inventory visibility service and can provide you the insights which can help logistics manager for better uh, order fulfillment. 
OK, so now let's uh, look into uh, more of a setup uh, and, and configuration. So in terms of uh, to have so some of the prerequisites which you need for uh, uh, inventory visibility uh, are that you have to have a tier two or higher sandbox environment. Uh, you have to install uh, or you have to deploy the D365 SCM environment along with a power platform or Dataverse environment. Uh, you need to register uh, application ID into the Azure application, uh, Azure Active Directory uh, for the authentication. Uh, and you need the, the deployable packages or the application packages which you deploy onto the uh, Dataverse side. Uh, you can get these packages from the inventory visibility support team uh, by sending an email to this email or you can also have an option to go directly into the Dataverse environment once you deploy it and through Power Platform Admin Center you can uh, deploy the uh, inventory visibility application. One thing to note here is that uh, there is no additional license cost for inventory visibility. Uh, as long as you have the D365 SCM license, you will be able to uh, deploy the inventory visibility service. You may incur some additional data worth sites uh, cost. Uh, that is uh, when you deploy the D365 SCM environment and when you deploy the data worth environment along with it, uh, it comes with a default storage. So if your data grows and uh, if it uh, goes beyond the data worth uh, default storage limit, then you might incur some of the storage cost uh, in terms of uh, for, for the data verse. Okay, so once you have these prerequisites, uh, then you will be following uh, these steps in uh, order to uh, uh, deploy the inventory visibility service. So very first thing uh, which you can do after you have deployed the D365 SCM environment and you have deployed the Power Platform or Data Wars environment and you have to make sure that they are linked correctly. Uh, once that is done, you can go ahead and deploy the inventory visibility service application on the data work side. Uh, as I mentioned previously, you can do that two way. You can either use the package deployer, deployer process to deploy the inventory visibility application in the data verse, or you can use the Power Platform Admin Center under Resources Dynamics 365 apps. You will find a, a, a application called inventory visibility and that you can install. Once the application is installed on the Dataverse site, you will come onto the LCS uh, D365 environment full details page. That is where you will be able to install the inventory visibility add-in. Once the inventory visibility add-in is deployed and the application is deployed on the Dataverse site, uh, you are ready to configure uh, that into a D365 supply chain. So you can go and log in into the D365 supply chain environment. You can enable the inventory visibility integration features and that will light up a couple of new forms for you into the system. Uh, the first form is where you have to go is inventory visibility integration parameters where you will set up the endpoint. Uh, endpoint is one of the important setup which we'll see in, in next couple of slides. Uh, that is basically an endpoint where your inventory visibility is being hosted. Uh, you can also set up the inventory uh, visibility integration jobs. These jobs are, are, are responsible for syncing the data from Dynamic 365 SCM to, uh, uh, to inventory visibility itself. Couple of uh, points to keep in mind that once you have installed this, how you are going to maintain uh, uh, these different components at the Dataverse level or at the D365 level or at the microservice level. So if there are any fixes or new features which are coming as part of day 360M related to the inventory visibility adding, they will come through the monthly service updates. Uh, so they will be embedded into that and you can take the new service update and you will be able to get the new features uh, on the day 365 SCM side. On the data work side, if there are any new changes or features coming as part of the inventory visibility application, those will be visible uh, as part of the Power Platform Admin Center where you can see your uh, installed apps and you will see that inventory visibility is one of them and you will you will be able to see if there are any new updates available at that point of time you are uh, entitled to take the new updates uh, as part of that uh, update uh, inventory visibility service itself is not visible to the customers or partners that is managed by Microsoft and Microsoft will automatically update that microservice if they have to patch uh, patch the service for some reason.
Okay, so once you have uh, installed the inventory visibility, you have deployed it uh, and you have configured it. Uh, what you can, the next steps which you can do is you can enable the built-in uh, integration between the D365 SCM and inventory visibility. So these are some of the forms which are a part of D365 SCM. So the, if you see the very first uh, screenshot is the inventory visibility integration parameters. That is where you set up the inventory visibility endpoint. And as you can see, the URL of the endpoint, uh, it's currently showing inventory service dot uh, WUS. That means it is uh, West US region. So this service uh, which I am using in my screenshot and my demo, it's deployed in the West US region. Uh, so typically when you deploy your D365 environment, uh, whichever region you deploy your D365 environment, and if you decide to deploy the Dataverse environment at the same time, uh, uh, both the Dataverse environment and D365 environment will be deployed into the same region. And when you install your inventory visibility or when you deploy your inventory visibility service, that will also deploy into the same region. So you want to be careful when you are uh, uh, working or deploying these environments, you want to make sure that they are both the environments belong to the same region so that your inventory visibility service also gets deployed into the same region. Uh, you have another parameter to uh, specify, which is maximum number of record requests you want to process in one request. So in 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 D365 SCM, you, you will have thousands of uh, or millions of records in terms of uh, uh, inventory transactions. And when they get synced, uh, you can this this parameter will be helpful when the, the inventory on hand data gets synced from D365 SCM to inventory visibility. So if if you specify 500 records here, that means in one request, the 500 records will be processed. You can bump this parameter up to 1000, but that is the, the maximum uh, you should specify. Uh, that's the recommended uh, uh, settings for how many uh, records you want to process in, in one request. So once you have set up this inventory visibility integration parameters, you are uh, now ready to enable the integration. Uh, so you can go into the inventory visibility integration forms. That is where you can enable the integration. As soon as you enable the integration, it kind of creates two bad jobs. One is to do the initial push of data and another one is the uh, to sync the data between D365 CM and inventory visibility. So initial push, what it does is basically read all of the invent some records from the D365 uh, uh, system and put it into a staging table called invent inventory data service invent some queue. And then the second job is responsible to run uh, and it will basically take all of the records from the staging table and will push uh, into the uh, inventory visibility service. This inventory visibility integration job which runs that uh, it can be run uh, or it can be set up to run at a regular interval. So you can set up the frequency uh, depending on your process flow and depending on how frequently you would like to sync the D365 SCM data into the inventory visibility service. You can uh, see in the screenshot we uh, have listed some of the classes which are responsible for the, the initial push as well as the incremental push. Uh, so uh, in case you have uh, issues uh, with the data sync issues, you can refer some of these classes uh, and you can refer this table and uh, look at the data which is inside this table if they are not syncing for any reason. So you can also use four sync options to, to troubleshoot some of the sync issues or you can disable uh, as well uh, sync for a specific period of time if you if you if you have that requirement. One thing to keep in mind that this is a near real time integration because this is relying on the bad jobs and bad job frequency. You can set it up at a minimum from one minute to whatever uh, higher frequency you want to set. But if you really want to have a uh, real time integrations, then you will have to do some extensions. Uh, you will have to identify in your processes which are the trigger points which are uh, is, which are doing the inventory transactions or inventory posting into the 365 SCM and uh, at those trigger points you will have to extend the D365 SCM code base to call the inventory visibility API to reflect or sync the changes of D365 SCM to 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 inventory visibility. It's it's not recommended because it requires uh, uh, code modifications at multiple places uh, and uh, uh, in, in so for for 
our recommendation is to always use the built-in integration via the batch jobs. It gives you the near real-time uh, inventory on-hand data into inventory visibility. Okay, so now uh, once you have set up uh, an integration jobs on D365, uh, you are also ready to uh, set up uh, other external data sources as part of uh, the data Dataverse experience or the Power Apps experience. So as I mentioned, once you deploy the application on the Dataverse side, uh, you will be uh, presented with a Power App, a model driven Power App. This model driven Power Apps uh, can help you uh, with the configuration of inventory visibility service. So you can not only configure the FNO data source, uh, so once you install this application, it will automatically create a data source with FNO and the FNO keyword is reserved for uh, D365 SCM integration. And as part of this data source, you can do the dimensions mapping as well as you can create uh, different measures which you would like to track as part of the inventory visibility service. Uh, you can not only create other external data sources which correspond through your uh, external systems, uh, but ultimately you can do the same dimensions mapping, measures creation, calculated measures creations as part of this configuration. One of the important concept or the or design consideration for inventory visibility is that it stores the data into in-memory cache uh, via, uh, across partitions. And what is the partition in terms of inventory visibility? It's basically a site and warehouse. So that has been uh, built in into the design itself. So you cannot uh, view inventory on hand uh, without site and warehouse. So whenever you query or request for inventory on hand information, you have to always specify the organization ID and item. And on top of that, you have to specify the site and warehouse. And this is uh, really critical for uh, inventory visibility uh, service to uh, perform better so whenever you send any request uh, to review the in inventory on hand data it can perform uh, faster based on this partition configuration this partition you cannot change it it's currently not supported on top of that you can also set up the product index hierarchy consider this hierarchy as uh, uh, you can create a different set of different sets uh, including different combination of dimensions and when you uh, request for inventory on hand information you can uh, also pass this product index hierarchy uh, based on which you can basically retrieve the result of your inventory on hand data uh, based on the, the product index hierarchy so it not only perform it does it it not only helps uh, retrieve the data faster uh, but it can also help you group by and aggregate the results based on those uh, specified dimensions. You can create as many sets as you want, but you want to pay a special uh, uh, attention how you configure this because these are the index and these are the index which will be used as part of your query uh, or as part of your request. So you want to make sure that you are creating the right combination of dimension as part of your set. <clears throat> All right, so next is uh, once you have configured the uh, inventory visibility service and you have defined your data sources, you have defined your dimensions, you have defined your calculated measures, then you are ready to uh, basically use the inventory visibility service. Uh, you can use the inventory visibility couple of ways. Uh, so out of the box, uh, you get a power apps, model driven power apps. And this is the UI which you are seeing in the screenshot to view the in, on, on hand inventory. Uh, but uh, you can also, in a lot of integration scenarios, you will be using the APIs to basically request the inventory on hand information and you will get a result set. And that result set you can consume as part of your uh, request. So it, that request might be coming from external systems or it might be coming from uh, custom Canvas Power Apps uh, or it could be coming from uh, uh, other so set of UI. Uh, so you you can basically query inventory visibility service through either APIs and get the result set, or you can use the inbuilt Power App uh, uh, user interface, which is here, uh, to to get the inventory on hand information. You can do three kind of operations with the inventory visibility service. You can read the inventory on hand information, so you can specify your organization 
and product along with the partition which i mentioned earlier it's just site and look site and warehouse and on top of that you can also specify the product index hierarchy uh, so you can specify other set of dimensions and values to retrieve the exact result set which you are looking for uh, so you can read the information from inventory visibility but you can also add the inventory on hand information from your external systems into the inventory visibility so your inventory data is always flowing through integration built in integration from d365 scm into the inventory visibility but uh, if you want to have a centralized hub for your inventory visibility where you where you can track all of the inventory from across the systems then you will use these apis to basically add your inventory data from external systems into uh, into the inventory visibility and then you, you can always query against the inventory visibility to look at the uh, the latest inventory on hand information you also have the api to update the inventory on hand information so if you have uh, uh, already added some inventory on hand and uh, uh, there are some changes happening on the source systems uh, then you can basically also use the update api to update the some of the inventory on hand As part of the inventory visibility, you also get a uh, option to do the reservation. Uh, however, this reservation is a soft reservation. Uh, the reason why it is called soft reservation is the reservation scope uh, in this case is limited to the inventory visibility itself. It doesn't reserve and it, it doesn't go and, and update or interact with your uh, respective external system or D365 SCM. Uh, so whatever reservation you do is uh, is limited to uh, inventory visibility service itself. In order for reservation to work, you have to do a couple of uh, uh, configurations. One is the soft reservation mapping. In the soft reservation mapping, you will basically define which measures you want to reserve on uh, for a particular uh, uh, external system or a D365 system. So if you define that measures, you will be able to reserve a quantity or uh, uh, quantity against that measure. Uh, you can also define a measure uh, against which you want to check. So if you can define a measure called available uh, physical available, uh, if there are quantity available against that uh, that measure, then only you will be able to reserve for a specific measure. So you those kind of checks are uh, also in place and validations are also in place. So you can you make use of uh, 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 those physical measures before you do the reservation. The other setup which you need for reservation is soft reservation hierarchy. So you can define your sequence of dimensions against which you want to reserve. So you can specify, okay, I would like to uh, reserve a certain quantity against site, warehouse and location. So that you can define as part of your uh, reservation hierarchy. And when you, uh, request reservation through the UI or through the APIs, you can basically uh, pass those appropriate parameters of site, warehouse and, and location for that particular item and for that particular data source by defining the number of quantity you want to reserve and it is going to reserve that much quantity for that uh, for that measure. Again, as you can see here, uh, there are two set of APIs available for uh, doing the reservation. So if you have integration scenario and if you are reserving from the external systems, then you will build your integrations. And as part of the those integrations, you will use one of these APIs, either reserve or bulk reserve. So reserve, is, reserve will uh, do for one item, bulk reserve uh, does the reservation for, uh, for the multiple items. In case you want to unreserve the quantity, you can specify the same set of parameters, but with the negative quantity. Uh, so one thing again I want to mention here is that uh, you the it's soft reservation because the reservation is uh, happening in the scope of inventory visibility service itself. It doesn't go ahead and update your source systems or the external systems. So you have to build your process flow in such a manner that uh, uh, you read this inventory on hand information uh, for for the reservation into your external systems, you basically uh, associate that those reservation with the appropriate sales orders or sales order lines, and then you basically offset those reservation uh, by building uh, integrations and updating those reservation quantity back again into the inventory visibility. So those kind of uh, uh, process flow you will have to build uh, in order for this solution to work end to end. 
Okay, so I think uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, look at some of this uh, in action. So as you can see my screen, uh, this is my D365 SCM environment, uh, and I have deployed this environment in uh, West US region, and it has been, when it's been deployed, I have also configured the D365 uh, Power Platform environment. So as you, you can see the power platform environment here. So this is the way you can make sure that your uh, D365 STM environment is correctly linked with your power platform environment. And you will see this environment corresponding environment uh, uh, in on the power platform side as well. So in the power platform as well, I have this environment and you can see it's been linked with your uh, uh, D365 STM environment. The one of the important parameter which you will be needed is the environment ID. So this is the environment ID of of your uh, D365 environment when you uh, configure the the inventory visibility service. Okay, so once you have that linking and once you have deployed the uh, the uh, D365 STM environment and the Dataverse environment, the next step here for you is to uh, basically install the, the inventory visibility service in the Dataverse environment. So you can either deploy the uh, inventory visibility application through this experience, which is uh, uh, in the Power Platform Admin Center, or you can also use the package deployer uh, process to deploy the inventory visibility service, uh, inventory visibility application in Dataverse site. When you deploy the inventory visibility application, what it does is basically install five solutions which are related to the inventory visibility service. And as part of this solution, you will also get a inventory visibility power app. So once you have the uh, once you have installed the application on Dataverse side, uh, what you can also do is you can go into the LCS and you can install the inventory visibility. Uh, add-ins uh, on the LCS details on, on the environment details page. Once the uh, inventory visibility add-in is installed, then you can you are ready to configure uh, your inventory visibility as part of your Power Apps. So when you look when you log when you open the inventory visibility Power App, you will be basically presented with three user interfaces. One is the configuration. So this is where you do all all of the configurations related to your uh, inventory visibility and then there are a couple of uh, other UI forms where you can uh, do view the inventory on hand information uh, or you can reserve and then you 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 have another grid view where you can create different views uh, for the inventory on hand information. So uh, let's look at how you can configure the inventory visibility. So very first thing uh, when you install uh, the inventory visibility it automatically creates this data source connection with the uh, D365 SCM and as I mentioned FNO keyword is reserved for the FNO integration, but on top of that you can create uh, other data sources. Uh, so I have as you can see in this example, I have another ERP, I have IOM, I have POS systems configured as a uh, other data sources and I am bringing all of my uh, uh, inventory on hand data uh, through APIs for those external systems into inventory visibility. For FNO, I have already configured the built-in integration, so my data is already flowing from SCM system into the inventory visibility. Now, when you uh, configure these data sources, you have capability to map the dimensions of those uh, external system or the source system with the inventory visibility dimensions. So these are all the base dimensions which are available as part of the inventory visibility. So it supports all of the dimensions which are part of SCM. Uh, on top of that, it supports uh, it supports 12 custom dimension as well as it supports uh, extended dimension as well. So if uh, in your requirement you have created any custom dimensions, those scenarios will also be supported. You can also set up the measures uh, here as part of the data sources. You can set up the physical measures or you can set up the other measures as well, uh, uh, which you would like to track as part of the inventory visibility service. Similar uh, uh, setup exists for all the data sources. You basically set up your dimensions, whatever the dimensions you have in the source system and you want to corresponding, uh, you want to map it with the corresponding dimension of the inventory visibility service and you can create as many measures as you want, you want to track. Uh, these are all the measures which you can track 
uh, but on top of that you can also configure the calculated measure calculated measures are basically uh, a calculation of the available physical measures so in this case i am i have created uh, available for reservation calculated measure which is a combination of uh, available physical from the fno source and the reserve order from the FNO source. So you can create uh, as many calculated measures with the help of uh, 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 available physical measures. And these are all will be part of your inventory on hand uh, result set and you will be able to track the inventory across for for these uh, measures as well. Another important setup, as I mentioned earlier, is to set the product index hierarchy. So whenever you are requesting on hand, uh, you would like to make sure that uh, your uh, uh, request are uh, across those dimensions. So you can create number of sets and this number of sets can have different combination of dimension, uh, but you want to pay special attention to how you uh, combine this dimension uh, as part of your set. So in this case, uh, as you can see set number two, I have uh, two dimensions. One is WMS location and license rate. I don't need to specify the site and warehouse because that is already part of the inbuilt design and it will always query the request against that. So those are the two mandatory uh, parameters which you have to always pass when you request the inventory on hand information. But on top of that, you can have this product index hierarchy with the other combination of dimension. So when I use this set, I will have to specify the location ID and the license plate and the 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 query will basically uh, use this as an index to retrieve the data from the inventory visibility. Not only that, you can also group by uh, the result set by this uh, uh, indexes and you can get the aggregated result set. So this is all the information or the configuration which you need to basically read, read the inventory on hand information from the inventory visibility or you can add or update the inventory uh, data into the inventory visibility. Now these two setups as I mentioned is are uh, for reservation. So soft reservation mapping is the one where you can define on which measures you want to reserve the quantity. So here you can specify OK for FNO data source. I want to use this measure on which I would be uh, reserving the quantity. Uh, the another setup I have is like here I have mentioned that I would like to reserve against the soft reserve order measure which is part of my IV data source. And uh, another thing which I mentioned is that you can put a check uh, or a specific you can define a measure uh, against you would like to check before you do a reservation. So before I do a reservation against the reserve order, I want to make sure that there is a, uh, enough available quantity for reservation. So that's why I have uh, set up this measure. So when I do a reservation, it will always check if I have the enough quantity available for reservation, then only it will allow me to reserve. So those kind of validation and checks you can set it up here. And for reservation, there is another setup is called soft reservation hierarchy mapping. Uh, so here you can define a set of dimensions or a hierarchy of dimensions against which you would like to uh, reserve. So here, as you can see, I have specified site, warehouse and location on which I would like to reserve my quantity. So when you do a reservation through API or through UI, you will have to specify this uh, site, warehouse and location and the quantity will be reserved against that item for that data source in that particular legal entity against these dimensions. There are a couple of features which you can toggle uh, and disable or enable. So first one is on hand reservation. So if you want to enable the reservation feature, then you will have to uh, enable this feature and uh, and you will be able to use the, the reservation feature. Uh, this feature is uh, for if you enable this feature, as I mentioned in the architecture diagram, all of the inventory on hand data resides into the inventory visibility service itself as part of the in memory cache. So whenever you request inventory on hand, it will be retrieved from there. Whenever you add inventory on hand data, it, 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 uh, it, it, it's going to be stored into the inventory uh, visibility in memory cache. But you have an option to also sync the inventory on hand data into the Dataverse table. And you can create uh, basically uh, Power Apps or Power BI insights on top of the uh, those in Dataverse tables. So for that purpose, you can enable this feature. However, you want to keep in mind that the inventory data between the inventory visibility service and 
the data verse gets synced every 10 minutes. So you have a delay of 10 minutes. So uh, you might not be able to get the real time information or near real time information of uh, what you have in the inventory visibility. But this will be helpful if you would like to store the data into the data verse itself and you would like to build uh, certain Power BI insights or if you want to generate some kind of power automate triggers uh, and, and, and email uh whenever there are inventory changes happening uh, across some of the data sources or, or against certain physical measures so for those kind of scenarios uh, you have an option to sync the inventory on hand data from inventory visibility into the data verse so when you uh, make any changes to this one you have to click on update configuration what this does is this basically sync all of the uh, configurations into the uh, inventory visibility service in memory cache. So whenever you send a request to inventory service, uh, it kind of understand what uh, configurations are done, what data sources, what uh, dimensions mapping are there, and based on that, it will query and retrieve the result set. So really, the data works component as part of the inventory visibility, as I mentioned, serves two purposes. One is it it provides you the capability to configure the inventory visibility services. Uh, inventory visibility service and then it also provides you some of the ui aspect through which you can view the on hand uh, as well as uh, you can resolve okay so once you have done all this setup you are basically ready to use the inventory uh, uh, visibility service so uh, this is another ui uh, through which you can do the inventory on hand so as you can see here this is the form where i can uh, look at my inventory on hand information. So here I have specified organization, site, warehouse, and product. You have a capability to specify multiple site, multiple locations as part of this uh, UI, uh, and it will show you the results set across all the physical measures or all the measures which you have defined across your uh, data sources. So it's uh, as you can see, it's not just the uh, uh, D365 SCM uh, measures, but uh, the other data sources which I have specified, it brings all of the uh, measures here. So this really gives you a global view of inventory uh, for that item for uh, against that legal entity and uh, uh, across data sources. So you can uh, really make use of this uh, uh, and, and use it for your uh, process flows. You can also uh, use the product index hierarchy and you can use, the, as I mentioned, you can use those and it will basically uh, uh, aggregate or group by your uh, result based on that particular uh, dimension. And you can basically have option to even filter based on that uh, uh, product index hierarchy uh, dimensions. So that is how you view the on-hand inventory. The UI doesn't give you any capability right now to uh, add inventory or update the inventory through the UI. Uh, for that purpose, you have to use the API. So you have to build your integrations and use APIs to bring the inventory on hand data from the external systems into the into the inventory visibility. However, you can do the reservation through the UI. So again, as part of the reservation, you can specify uh, which data source, which measure you want to reserve against, uh, which legal entity you want to reserve, which dimensions you want to reserve against, and for which item. So once you reserve this, uh, it will reserve the 10 quantity against the soft reserve order measure in this, uh, in this data source. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the this is a soft reservation. So the effect of this uh, reservation is limited to the inventory visibility. It doesn't go ahead and uh, update your reservation in your respective external system or D365 system. So that is uh, another way you can do the reservation. Uh, and then we have another uh, user interface. This is more of a grid view of user interface where you can create different views. So I have created different views so you can apply uh, pre uh, you can have your views pre filtered uh, with specific site with specific locations or warehouse uh, uh, and you can save those views and you can view those uh, uh, inventory on hand information. You can you have option to choose which across which dimensions you would like to see if you have any custom dimension those you can choose. You can also def uh, you can choose which measures you want to see. So this will give you the more personalized view of your inventory on hand information. 
Okay, so now this is how uh, you can make use of Power Apps and the capabilities of Power Apps. Uh, but you are always uh, welcome to create your own Canvas app, and you can always create a uh, Canvas app in a such a manner that you can represent a result set which are uh, useful for the users. It is possible that users might not be interested in viewing all of the measures. They are only interested in some specific measures. So those kind of different uh, views you can create as as part part of your custom Power Apps, and those custom Power Apps you can uh, basically directly integrate with the uh, inventory visibility service through API. So you basically send a request to inventory visibility through Power App. It will uh, return you the result set, and you can represent the result set in a in a way you would like to represent it for the for the users. When you are building your integrations, uh, you can also uh, we have also provided you some of the uh, uh, the postman collections. These are particularly useful when you are building your integrations with the external systems through APIs. Uh, so as part of your uh, when you if you would like to test some of your integrations, uh, you can do that using Postman as part of the Postman collection. What you really need is your inventory visibility endpoint, which we discussed where you can see the inventory visibility endpoint and you have to specify the D365 SCM environment ID. So once you specify these two things uh, and uh, each of this. Uh, uh, each of these uh, APIs we would also need uh, uh, authentication so you can provide that barrier token. So I can quickly show you how you can get that. So you can get all that information from uh, the settings page. So you can get the environment ID. You can get the inventory visibility endpoint. You can get the barrier token. Uh, this barrier token expires after a few minutes, so you might want to uh, refresh that and you get it will generate the barrier token and then you can copy this barrier token as part of your postman collection and uh, then you will be ready to use this uh, APIs. So as you as you see, I have two APIs. One is for doing the adding the on hand inventory. Uh, back here. So this if you want to add the on hand inventory into the inventory visibility service, this is for bulk addition or creation of inventory on hand data into the D365. So as you can see really as part of this API, I'm specifying which legal entity, which item against which source and for which measure I would like to add inventory on hand information across which dimension. So once I uh, send this information, it will basically create this information into the inventory visibility service and then you can always uh, read the inventory on hand information using this API. So this API is to read the inventory on hand information. Uh, you can read across uh, multiple products. You can read across multiple sites, locations. Uh, you can group by based on the product index hierarchy. Uh, and, and as you can see in the result set, it gives you the information about that product across data sources, across uh, different dimensions and across different measures. So once you get this result set, it's really up to you how you would like to uh, aggregate this information, how you'd like to represent this information in the respective external system, or if you have built a, a, a power app or something, uh, you can represent this information in an, an appropriate manner. You have two APIs for reservation as well, so you can use the reservation. It's uh, the same thing which I showed you on the UI aspect. You can basically specify your parameters and you can specify your uh, measures against which you want to reserve and specify the quantity and it will it will do a reservation for for you uh, uh, in, in in the scope of inventory visibility service. OK, so that's how you can uh, Test your inventory uh, visibility integrations uh, using the, the Postman collections. Uh, I would like to also show you. You can use the Power Automate flow, so I have created a couple of uh, Power Automate flows. One is to view the inventory on hand. Uh, one is to create inventory on hand into the inventory visibility and one is for reservation. So let's look at one of the uh, Power App. Uh, sorry, the Power Automate. So this is a very basic power app where it in the first step it just takes the input like uh, for what data source, what uh, legal entity, what site, what warehouse you would like to view the inventory on hand. And these are uh, really all the parameters which you needed in order to authenticate against your 
uh, tenant in order in order to uh, authenticate uh, against the inventory visibility so, so these are all the parameters which are needed for that uh, you will get the Azure Active Directory token using that token you can generate a barrier token for that security service and this is the last step which is actually making an API, API call so it's making an API call to our inventory visibility service where it has been deployed and then as you can see as part of I'm reading the on hand information so I'm passing this on hand index query API as part of this I'm specifying my organization ID site and location and uh, it's giving me the result uh, of that inventory on hand data for that product across uh, different data sources different dimensions and and measures so this is a, a good way uh, you can build your integrations as well so if you have a power app uh, and in the power app you can ask the user certain parameters once they specify the items legal entity and and site and warehouse uh, basically the power app can trigger the the power automate and power automate can basically return you the result set and then you can represent the the result set of uh, of of your query in uh, in in power app uh, for for how how user wants to see so see the inventory on hand data similarly you can build uh, uh, use these apis to build your uh, uh, integrations with their external systems uh, so from external system itself you can directly uh, authenticate against the tenant you can authenticate against the inventory visibility service and uh, you can directly build your integrations from your external systems with the inventory visibility so whether it's to read information or whether you want to add uh, so it's really important when you build integrations you uh, define the process flow how it should work you can define the frequency how you would like to run the integrations how frequently you want to run integrations between your external systems and in inventory visibility okay so that's pretty much what i wanted to cover as part of the the demo let's go back into the presentation so as part of the demo we saw uh, how to set up and uh, install and set up inventory visibility uh, using the power app experience we also saw how you can use the apis for your when you're building your integrations through postman collections and you can also create some of the power automate flows which you can integrate with your uh, uh, power power apps okay these are some of the uh, do's and don'ts uh, which we think are, are really helpful when you are deploying the inventory visibility service so the very first thing you would like to make sure that uh, when you deploy uh, the d365 scm environment uh, you try to deploy the uh, power platform and the dataverse environment at the same time so that uh, you don't have any issues uh, linking those environments those will be automatically linked and uh, uh, because we have uh, seen issues with some of the customers where uh, uh, thus the, the 365 SCM environment and the power platform environment have, have not been linked correctly. Either the power platform environment already existed and and uh, they were trying to link it with the D365 environment or in certain scenarios we have seen that D365 environment was deallocated and then it was reallocated with the same name and the power platform environment already existed with the same name and it didn't it didn't do the right linking so you would like to pay special attention to those uh, those initial uh, deployment steps and also you want to make sure that uh, both the fno instance or the power the scm instance and the power platform instance are deployed into the same region uh, uh, because it will ultimately deploy your uh, inventory visibility service as well into the same region uh, you can also consider inventory visibility service uh, not only to view D365 SCM data, but uh, if you have external systems, uh, as I mentioned in the, previously, uh, you can basically use inventory visibility service as a centralized hub to have a, uh, all of the inventory on hand data at one place uh, and everybody is kind of looking the same information throughout the organization uh, so that you can get a global view of inventory. Uh, it is really important that uh, for the inbuilt integration between D365 and inventory visibility to work properly, you have the correct set correctly set up the dimensions mapping as well as the you have correctly set up the measures uh, so that uh, if you have not set up those correctly, uh, you might run into the sync issues. So you want to pay special attention to uh, those kind of uh, configuration. 
uh, do not use different endpoints because uh, let's say you have configured uh, your sandbox environment, uh, the STM environment, you have uh, set up the power platform environment, the inventory visibility service has been deployed uh, and and later you might deallocate or you might refresh the production data into the sandbox environment. Uh, then the production environment will have a different endpoint. Uh, so you want to make sure that you correctly set up uh, the environment and the correct endpoint when you have this deallocation activity or refresh of production data, though sandbox data happens. Uh, uh, you will not be able to update uh, inventory data into the inventory visibility uh, if it's coming from uh, Dynamics 365 SCM. You can always add inventory data. You can always update the inventory data for the external systems, but not for the FNO uh, FNO source because the that build that integration is already inbuilt. Data is always flowing from D365 SCM into the inventory visibility. However, you can use you can do the reservation. So you can do the reservation against the FNO instance, but you will not be able to add or update any inventory for the FNO data source. That restriction is not applicable for the external sources. You can uh, read, you can uh, reserve, you can add or update the inventory for the inventory on hand into the inventory visibility. So those are some of the do's and don'ts as part of the uh, when you deploy, you should consider. So I think that's it what I wanted to cover as part of uh, today's tech talk session. I hope uh, it would be useful and uh, I would encourage you to look at your requirements and 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 uh, try inventory visibility and and provide feedback. Uh, you can find more uh, information about inventory visibility through this Microsoft Docs article. Uh, we have also provided a link for the Postman collection. So if you are in process of building integrations with your external systems, those will be extremely useful. I would also encourage you to join the Yammer group uh, for the D365 theme inventory visibility where you can ask questions, where you can uh, uh, our product team members are also monitoring that. So you can if you have certain scenarios which you would like to be part of inventory visibility, uh, certainly you can provide feedback there. Uh, and it will be considered uh, as part of the future roadmap. I think that's pretty much uh, what I have. Uh, I think we have a couple of minutes before we close off. Uh, so Harsh, uh, I, I believe you have been answering the questions. Is there anything you would like to highlight or any question which we haven't answered yet? Uh, thanks, Irene. Uh, uh, we, we have been answering a lot of questions. One of the question, uh, Irene, is about uh, can the Power App uh, be, uh, can the Power App supports offline capabilities as well? Uh, that is something, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you know, we can answer. Uh, yeah, I don't know, top of my head. Uh... But at this moment, the power apps which we have right now as part of the inventory visibility, it doesn't support the offline capability. Got it. <clears throat> yeah, I think we are good here in on Q&A side, so I don't see uh, any further questions on the Q&A panel. Yeah, if you have any more questions, uh, uh, do send your questions or if you need more information to this email, address and uh, we will review those questions and and will respond back to you so uh, feel free to engage with us uh, via this email or the the yammer group and and uh, uh, provide your feedback uh, ask your questions uh, all right so i think uh, we have with that uh, i would like to hand over back to brad uh, for the closing comments thanks Aaron. thanks to all of our attendees out there um, I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We'd like your feedback on today's session and to hear what you would like to see in future events. Thank you for your participation on that. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. And finally, I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters today and to you, our audience, for joining us. 
have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everyone.